Hello, hello. What's going on, Adam? Hi, Lena. Hi, Miriam. Hi, Brianna. What's going on, everybody? Happy September. Is it the 4th? This is, oh my gosh. It's the 5th. The 5th. It feels so good to be back in the kitchen with you. If you are a normal homemade cook along, or we call you homemaders, uh, you know we've been off for the past week, so we've really missed you. If you are new here, we've missed you too. I don't know where you've been for the past three years, because we've been cooking up a storm waiting for you to get here. So welcome newbies, welcome homemaders who come on a regular basis. We are so excited that you are here. Uh, today is going to be a doozy. We are talking one of my favorite topics in the world, and that is salmon. Oh, the salmon is so good. It's Moroccan, kind of spiced with pomegranate and miso and thyme. And I don't know, to me, salmon can be so drab. It's kind of like chicken. I've had so much bland, boring salmon. And to find a salmon that just pops, that you just go back to again and again and you never get sick of is so beautiful. It's so timeless. So really excited to walk you through that today. A uh, couple of just household stuff. Um, the whole idea behind this is that you are able to interact with us in, in real time. So if you want to talk to me, which I would love to talk to you and see your beautiful face, even if you're not cooking along, you can raise your hand by just pressing the little virtual raised hand thing and we will call on you, but I have to see you. So you have to be willing to share your video feed. If that's not your thing, we do have thousands of people on this. So I understand that's a lot of people to be asking questions in front of, I get that. You can of course interact with our other chef. Her name is Kat. She is in the chat. What's up, Kat? What's up, Chef Joel? How are you? I'm doing great. We were just raving seafood. So Kat's originally from Hawaii. She said she's missing home. So she's been like searching the city for really good Hawaiian food. And I, I'm like Kat, you know, I grew up in Seattle on the coast where, you know, fish is just on the table every day. It's not, you know, that's just not a, that's not a every once in a while. That's literally every day. And today we're going to talk a lot about seafood because we've teamed up with what we feel like is the best fish market not in America, on the planet, Fulton Fish Market. These guys are incredible. They're one of our most amazing partners. I'll tell you what they win this like absolute total gold star for is they're our longest living partner. So they've been in business for over 200 years. I'll let that just sink in for a sec. I don't even know a business that's been in business for 200 years. That just speaks to quality. So Fulton Fish Market, they were, again, born many, many hundreds of years ago in New York City. And they would literally just curate the best fish for restaurateurs, for people to buy. Um, and then it only became for restaurants for a long time until the 2000s, where now we, as everyday people, can order from Fulton Fish Market. We love them primarily for quality. I mean, they're going to deliver the freshest, the best, most curated seafood to your door, which we love. So if you're interested in using them or trying them out, we'll put codes up, but you get $25 off your very first order if you've never ordered from Fulton Fish Market before, and you get $50 off of any subscription. And you can subscribe to Salmon, to they have like a scallop subscription, a crab subscription, which means it will just come every month. Um, I love it. It actually comes as often as you want it to. So $50 off the subscription, $25 off your first order. We love them. We'll talk so much why, but let's get cooking. So first and foremost, um, we're going to talk salmon. What I want everyone to do is this is meant to be like a weeknight salmon meal. And so this is something that you can kind of whip up. The chickpea fries that are with this, maybe that's not weeknight. That's a little special. But the salmon itself, absolutely. So we kind of want to cook it fast. So I preheated my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're cooking along, go ahead and do that now. Preheat your oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, sometimes when I cook salmon, I like to cook it much, much lower in temp, like 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And it might take 25 minutes, but it really creates a silky salmon, 
when I'm in a rush and I want kind of just that plump, beautiful, just perfectly cooked salmon, 400 is the max I would go. You can broil salmon, that's fine, but that's really just gonna darken it. 400 is about the max, otherwise it gets a little dry. Um, so the first step is we're gonna make this really good kind of paint, like this glaze for this salmon. And this calls for kind of a crazy ingredient. I'm gonna hold this up. This is called pomegranate molasses. It's literally like molasses, but obviously from the pomegranate. So it's got a little more acid, it's got a little bit more sweetness, tartness to it. I, if you like balsamic vinegar, you will die for pomegranate molasses. Like, this stuff is candy. You can literally just drizzle it. Oh my gosh. It's like the best syrup on the face of the planet. It tastes like cherries and dried fruit. It's so good. So the base is we start with a little bit of this pomegranate molasses. And then we've got miso, white miso. And I think some people don't really know what miso is or don't use it a lot. And a lot of you guys do, so just bear with me. But this is soybean paste. So this is basically peanut butter, but with soybeans instead of peanuts. And they ferment it. And it gives it just this funky, round, beautiful flavor. So we're going to add a couple of tablespoons in our pomegranate molasses of miso. Whisk that up. This is just making the most amazing like paste ever. And then just to give it a little bit more tartness because when it comes to salmon, or I think a lot of seafood in general, I like a little bright hit, right? So we grabbed a little lemon, just roll on it, give it a quick slice, save half for later, and squeeze half now. We're gonna go with some salt and pep. And mix it up. Chef, we have a question here. Bring it. If somebody can't find miso, what would be a substitute for that? That's a great question. You can absolutely use peanut butter, sunflower butter. Um, so any kind of ground nut would be good. It will give it that body and kind of that toastiness that we're looking for. It won't have that funk, but it will be really good still. That's a great question. All right. So then I just grab a sheet tray, just like this. I line mine with parchment just so like the fish doesn't stick. And I start with just like grabbing a paintbrush and just painting the bottom. And this will kind of caramelize the skin, but also help it kind of release. So we start there and we're gonna grab our gorgeous little salmon fillets. Every, everyone always asks me, how much salmon should you buy per person? Anyone know? Don't you Google it. I want to know in the chat, how much salmon weight-wise do you kind of assume per person when you're buying salmon? And this is really fish in general, not just salmon. What are people saying, Kat? I've got a bunch of six ounces here. Yeah. Yeah, so six ounces, I would say if you're really hungry, half a pound per person, right? If you've got like a pasta on the side, I might go a quarter pound per person, so you have a nice little piece of salmon. So, but yeah, about six ounces is perfect. So that's really, really a good kind of measurement. That's huge, because whenever I'm at the grocery store, I'm always wondering, oh my gosh, like I'll see a piece of halibut. And also, if you're shopping on Fulton Fish Market and you're not sitting in front of the seafood counter, you kind of want to know how much to buy. So take a look, and they also have tons and tons of resources on FultonFishMarket.com on their website that can help you with that as well. All right, so then you just grab this paint and you just slather. Now this is not a marinade. It would not be good as a marinade either because there's lemon in it, there's acid in the pomegranate molasses. So bottom line is it would actually cook the fish if you let the fish sit in this. This is meant as just a glaze, as like a paint. And I really want you to go heavy. Super important that you go heavy. You don't have to drown it, but I don't want you to miss one spot. So get the sides, get the tops, and it's okay if it kind of sits in a puddle. That's very normal. Beautiful. And then just to add some kind of brightness to this, we're gonna add pomegranate at the end as kind of a garnish, and that will add some really good pop. 
but some fresh thyme. So good. Right now, as fall is just peeking around the corner, you smell things like fresh thyme, uh, rosemary, and it really just makes you kind of feel warm and cozy. I love it. So I'm going to grab some thyme, strip it off, and just kind of sprinkle that up from above right over the top. What I wouldn't use for this is dried thyme. It'd be a little bit too strong. So really just take a minute, go to your grocery store, and get the fresh stuff. It's going to make a big, big difference. I'll tell you what else has been a big difference for us is really uh, the subscription. That's so unique to Fulton Fish Market. You know, um, we would subscribe to, let's just say you could subscribe to uh, Black Cod. And then you just know it comes. My family loves Black Cod. It's also known as Butterfish, right? right where you're from, right, Kat, in Hawaii? Black Cod's kind of known as Butterfish, or is that more? Yeah, Butterfish. Yeah, because it's like butter. I mean, it's so good. And so when you find a seafood or a piece of fish that you love, A, you can get a really good deal when you keep buying it in bulk from something like Fulton Fish Market. But B, you should always make sure it's on the menu. It's healthy, and it's just something that you don't want to think about all the time. Just let it show up. So I'll show you what these guys look like. Check that out. Look how beautiful those already look. I gave them enough space on the tray where they're really going to caramelize and look great, but they look awesome. There's already salt in there. So I'm going to pop these in. Again, 400 degrees. This is going to take about 15 minutes. Kat, keep me honest. I got you. Got me, chef? All right. Any questions on the salmon, guys, or Fulton Fish Market? How are we doing? Do you know um, where folks would be able to get some pomegranate molasses? Oh, good question. Honestly, any high-end grocer, so like Whole Foods, um, you know, those types of grocery stores on that level would absolutely have it. You can obviously find it on like Amazon, things like that. And then if you don't have any kind of high-end grocery stores near you, you might want to go to more like ethnic grocery stores. This is kind of a North African, kind of Middle Eastern ingredient. So if you have any Lebanese markets or things around you like that, they will definitely have it. That's like a staple for them in the kitchen, which I love. Cool. Well, salmon is so unique, this recipe. We wanted to really make a unique side dish to go with the salmon. And so we're kind of making what we call chickpea fries. Now, we thought chickpea because chickpea and kind of that Lebanese, Middle Eastern, right? You think about hummus, right? So pomegranate molasses, by the way, pomegranate molasses drizzled over hummus or in your guacamole. Oh, my. I, I could go on forever, again, around pomegranate molasses. But... We chose chickpea because those ingredients kind of go together. So we're going to make these chickpea kind of little frites. You start with chickpea flour. And you can buy chickpea flour. Uh, Bob's Red Mill, they're a partner of ours that we love. You can find those at the grocery store. It's just dried chickpeas ground up really, really small, right? Really fine into a little powder. So we've got that, a little bit of Parmesan, and some butter. And then meanwhile... I've got some water, about two cups, on a medium-high heat. And right when you start seeing some bubbles, which we're just about to see, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Cool. Grab a whisk. Just kind of start whisking in that salt. It's going to get nice and hot. This reminds me of when I was in the restaurant, the very beginning, we made polenta frites, or polenta little fries. This is almost the exact same method. I love this method. So bubbles are happening. You grab your chickpea flour right as your water starts to boil, and you just dump it in. It's going to look very weird. Then you can kind of turn down your temp to medium high, and it's going to thicken up almost like grits or like polenta. Look at that. Look how fast that thickens up. And it's going to boil, so you can turn it down off the heat. Once it's kind of boiled in together, you can literally turn it off. That's awesome. So I'm going to move it onto the counter. Add some butter, some Parmesan, and stir that in. I mean, this would be good just as is. It really does smell kind of like warm hummus. 
Oh, look how good this looks. Such a unique side dish. I love this. You really can surprise people with things like this. I think another big surprise, honestly, I know this is really basic, is when you serve really good seafood, when you serve really good fish. I, it's unbelievable. I say this all the time on these classes, but like I went to college over in Connecticut, which is coastal, amazing, but I was surprised how many people don't eat seafood. And then my dad's from Chicago, Midwest, they just never did. And then when you do have it, it's kind of like, no one really knows what to do with it. They just bake it or broil it. And it's just kind of an afterthought. They put a little soy sauce on top of it, which is nothing bad, but seafood and fish, just the limits are completely endless. And it is so healthy for you guys. I just went to the doctor two weeks ago. He's like, just, if, if you love seafood so much, Joel, just eat seafood. It's so, so healthy. So I think we all need to incorporate fish and seafood into our diets that much more. And by the way, we're talking salmon, and obviously you're probably thinking, oh, shrimp, salmon, you know, halibut, all the usual suspects. But one thing I love about Fulton Fish Market is you can find so much there. You can find things you've never heard of, never thought about, different types of crab, sand dabs. You get to kind of like peruse the best fish market in the world from the comfort of your home. I love that. So at this point, you kind of have this polenta looking, grits looking thing, and you want to pour it out onto a sheet tray. And we line that with parchment paper, and then you put it in the fridge. So Kat's going to go grab me one that's already set up. And while we're waiting for that, I'll put this to the side. We're going to get some oil going to crisp up these chickpea fritters. So I've got just vegetable oil in a nice deep pan and I'm going to start to kind of heat that up. Thank you, cats. So any questions on that step? We, we brought water to the boil. We whisked in our chickpea flour. We added a little salt, a little Parmesan, a little butter. And then once it's thick, you pour it out onto a sheet tray and let it sit in the fridge for two hours and you get this. Kind of looks like a dough. Doesn't that kind of look like a dough, cat? It does. It's kind of cool. So you pull that out onto your counter. And you can see it's totally set. Right? So it went for that really soft kind of molten vibe to this beautiful set thing. And, you know, you don't have to trim the edges, but it makes for a clean fry. So what I'm going to do is just kind of cut away the little trimmed edges here. Totally up to you if you want to do this. Still, obviously, eat these scraps. But for today, we're just going to put these to the side. And then this would be a long fry. So I'm just going to kind of cut these in half and then kind of create nice, thick little frites. Pretty easy. They cut so great. And again, it really, if you've ever had polenta, it's just like that. So you have kind of like these little fri fries. And that was so cool. Kind of break them up. They look like little frittatas. They're awesome. Like little pieces of cheese. Super cool. So I want to pause here because I just feel like that's such a different technique. How are we all doing with the chickpea part? Any questions? Got a couple questions yeah. here. Is there a recommended like thickness for these fries? Yeah, good question. We did about uh, half an inch, but you can go an inch, you can go two inches if you want them really thick, but I would say half an inch is kind of like the typical. And then you'll notice I kind of cut it about as thick as my finger, and I've got some thick fingers, so maybe two fingers for you guys at home. But I like to cut them a little thicker just because they hold on their shape a little bit more versus cutting it really thin into an actual fry. So a little thicker on these guys. They just bite better. And what was could the other you question? bake these? Ooh, yeah. You could totally air fry these, bake these. A lot of people will spoon like um, tomato sauce over these with Parmesan and mozzarella. They're so good. They're like little gnocchi, right? You can also punch them out in different shapes, like rounds. They don't have to be cut like this. Love it. Good questions, guys. So this part is not in the recipe, but I'm just tweaking it 
because I know how this stuff goes sometimes. So the recipe says just to kind of pick these up and start frying them. I think that you'll be fine if you do that, but you'll get an extra kind of golden brown crunch if you dust them in a little bit of flour first. So I'm gonna grab some salt, right into some all-purpose flour, move it around, and then toss your frites in. Everyone in the pool. And you can totally do this ahead of time. But you just kind of want to get them all nice and coated. And then you don't want them too floury. You just want to kind of shake off the excess. And then that can go right in the oil. And speaking of the oil, so again, I've got a pretty deep pan, right? So it's not a pot, but we call this like a saucier. So it's just a little bit thicker. And this is all you need. I'm about halfway up with vegetable oil, OK? Temperature about 350, 375 degrees. That's optimal. You can always take one and just test. So I'm just going to put it in and see if it boils. I think it needs another minute or so, but we'll let that one fly. Or I should say let that one fry. But you can see that's starting to kind of bubble up, crisp starting to really kind of happen. Now, right when you add that, the temperature of the oil drops, right? Because obviously the chickpea, we just put it in, is, is not hot. It's cold. It's like adding ice cubes to this hot oil. So every single time you add some, you just have to know the temperature is going to go down a little bit, which is so normal. You just want to kind of do these in batches. Hopefully that makes sense. By the way, the salmon smells so good. Like, I wish there was a way you guys could kind of zoom in on here, but I can see the pomegranate molasses just kind of caramelizing and getting sticky. The salmon itself smells sweet. And that's one of the things you can rest assured with Fulton Fish Market. The quality, you're never going to get anything fishy. You're never going to get anything off. It is primarily curated by the best fishmongers in the world. Yeah, we've got another question. I've got a couple of questions about your dusting here. Oh yeah, sure. Could you use like other flours like whole wheat or even some more chickpea flour or cornstarch? Yeah, I would go with cornstarch above all of those just because it's really thin or rice flour if you're gluten free or gluten free flour would work great too. Um, I would not do whole wheat flour. It will brown a little bit too much in the oil. Um, and then chickpea flour, I would want to experiment with. I wouldn't say no. I just want to see how long, how much that would actually cling to the actual fry itself. But I would say it's worth a try. I'm going to grab some more, speaking of which, and in we go. Oh, yeah. And again, we don't want to overload it. I've got some, just some uh, little, oh my God, I'm totally spacing, pliers, not pliers, tweezers, not tweezers, tongs. Man, it's been a while since I've been in the kitchen with you guys. I love it. So just some little tongs. Just kind of move them around so they don't stick to each other. And then right when they're trying to get a little bit golden brown, you'll start to see, you'll start to smell them. That's a good time to take them out. Oh, these are looking really good. See how they're holding their shape? That's The flour just kind of makes sure they don't break down. It kind of protects them. These are great. All right, so the fries are frying away. Meanwhile, I've got a big, big bowl, all right? And I'm going to add some spices to this, two big ones. They're not going to make it spicy. They're just going to give them some extra oomph. Smoked paprika and cumin. Hello, two of my favorite in the world. And they're going to go so well with that salmon. So you kind of just mix that around. We're going to add a little bit of salt in here too. So when these guys come out, they're just ready to go in this nice dusting. Oh, this smells incredible. All right, let's take a look. I think we're getting pretty close. We'll let them go a little bit longer, but these are looking pretty perfection. Amazing. Now, a lot of people ask me about different types of salmon. Which ones should you buy? Which ones should you not buy? And like I said, Fulton Fish Market has so many resources on their website. I, I, I do think of myself as a fish expert, but I think of them as Yoda of fish. Like they're on a different level than I am. I, 
I go on their website just when I have general questions about fish. By the way, I'm going to take these guys out. So I'm just going to grab a little spider, kind of get underneath them, drain them as good as you can, and then in we go. We don't have to toss them yet. We will. But bottom line is you should go on their website. There's incredible resources. Today, we're using um, a beautiful farm-raised Atlantic salmon. And I think farm-raised, and when you think about fish and sustainability and if you know me, that is a big topic. It's really, really important. You know, the reality is, is that we are really, in a lot of ways, overfishing a lot of species in the ocean. And so you have to start to be okay with talking about farmed seafood. That's just a reality of our world, right? And so farms, just like farms that you would buy vegetables from, have kind of pluses and minuses. And it's good to have a partner like Fulton Fish Market where I can kind of tell you, hey, we go to the most sustainable farms. We go to the ones with the best practices, which they do. And so it's really important that you kind of look for, you know, what are these fish fed? Where are they raised? How are they raised? No farm is perfect. Let me just be really clear, right? No farm is perfect. But there are better ones than others, right? Just like wild is not perfect. That's overfishing the natural population. It's depleting the population. So... There's kind of like these, really, when it comes to buying fish and seafood, you have big questions to make, right? And, and you need, like I said, you need a partner in that, whether it's a chef, whether it's a resource. So really, really lean on them for that. That's really, really important to kind of know what is the sustainable option, what is the best option. It's not always what you think. It's not always wild, Pacific caught, right? It depends on the time of the year, depends on what's available, so... That's my little rant of the day. All right, these look amazing. Right, we're not trying to get them too golden brown, just like that light fry. The second batch took way less time. This oil is getting nice up to temp. And chef, real quick, it's yeah. salmon time. Oh, is it time? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, hello. What? No, I didn't have to put on broil. I didn't have to do anything special. I literally just popped those in at 400 degrees. But because there's so much sweetness, there's sugar in the lemon, in the pomegranate molasses, it just kind of naturally caramelizes. I'm going to take out these frites real quick. Oh, man, these look awesome. I'm going to take these out. In we go. I'll do one more batch, and then we'll talk salmon for a second. I just got a little more frites in here that I want to fry up. I can't let these guys go. Nothing to waste. Beautiful. All right. That's my last batch. By the way, these ones you can start to kind of toss in our little spice mix. They'll break a little bit. That's okay. They look like fries. They look awesome. All right. So salmon. So a couple things that you know we did really right here is when I lift this up, sometimes you'll bake salmon and you'll see like little white albumin, right? That's like the little fat that kind of comes to the top, um, the protein that kind of settles, and you kind of see it come out. You don't see that here at all. The painting kind of holds that down. It just makes for a nice sheen of salmon. Right, so you don't have any of that white little globules coming out. This is perfectly cooked. How I know is I can take a spoon or the back of a spoon and just kind of insert it. And if you can kind of flake it with the back of the spoon, you're in really good shape. I'm just, I have to. There's so much to say there, I'm not even gonna go there. That is delicious. That is so good. We'll talk about that in a sec. So salmon is going to rest. I do like to let it rest. Do not just eat salmon hot out of the oven. A, it's too hot. B, you just want to let the protein settle. Just let the whole thing kind of mellow for a second. I'm going to grab this last little bit of frites. Look how great these came out. So easy and so different. And beyond the flour, which you can, we talked about, you can use rice flour or cornstarch, gluten-free. 
which is really nice. Chickpea flour is gluten free, naturally. Oh, these look awesome. All right, I'm gonna add a little more salt to them. I need to. I'm a chef. Sue me. Beautiful. Okay. So first thing, while we're letting these salmon kind of just rest, I take these fries and I just kind of pile them up big. Oh yeah, come on. Nice, crispy, different, pillowy fries. Look how fun those are. I'll hold those up for you guys. <laughs> Is that awesome? Those are so fun. They're kind of creamy in the middle. I'll taste one in a bit here. So I'll put these to the side. Then I grab my nice platter. When it comes to cooking seafood, just like you need to have kind of like a sous chef, a partner in the kitchen, you need to have a fish spatula. Okay, these are way more bendy than a normal spatula. They kind of cradle the fish. This is the only spatula I use at home. It really gets in there. Cats agreeing, like all chefs know the fish spatula is where it's at. So I'm gonna kind of get underneath here. And you can leave the skin behind or I like to pick it up and actually put it on there. But you can see the fish just kind of releases so easily. I think we'll go three. We'll leave this last one as a chef snack. Those look awesome. Still warm, still sticky, still delicious. And then a couple of things just to kind of add here. So first and foremost, just to kind of reemphasize the pomegranate molasses is we have a fresh pomegranate, which in the fall, these are in season. I love pomegranate. So little trick here is to cut the pomegranate in half widthwise. Beautiful. Turn it upside down so your fingers are kind of cradling it. Hold it tight and use a spoon and kind of just spank it. I know that sounds naughty, but all the little crop, you know, little seeds and little pomegranate nubules will come out along with a little bit of the juice, which is so fresh and delicious. But none of the white pits comes out, which I love. So that is how beautiful these look. I mean, I don't know if anyone's celebrating Rosh Hashanah or anything like this. Like, this is what I would serve. This is so different, so cool. Then I'm going to grab a lemon and just kind of shave that thin. You can eat lemon whole if you shave it really thin. And with the right seafood and the right fish, it really pops. So I just shave them as thin as you're comfortable using your knife for and just kind of drape them anywhere you can. That look nice? It doesn't have to be a whole one. It could be kind of a Chef, half. Chef, what would be a good like salad or green vegetable to have along with Ooh. this? You know, I love, because this is so kind of acid forward, right? It's got lots of lemon and the pomegranate molasses. I might want something more bitter, like arugula or escarole or endive or radicchio. So maybe like a really good bitter green salad would work really well with this. It's a good question. All right, next we've got a little bit more fresh thyme just for some greenery. So just kind of rip that over the top, sprinkle that all over. Yeah, and this is actually a really cool trick. As you kind of sprinkle, if you want to kind of serve a fun little garnish, you can just take the thyme Right, your nice fresh thyme. And since you already have your fry oil going, just kind of toss them in, stand back, because they're going to pop. Mikhailo, yeah, there you go. There you go. Let them fry until you stop hearing them. Right, see how they're still talking to me? They're still frying, they're still frying. That means there's water in them still. So just wait like another minute. And what you'll have is this really crispy, beautiful time and it's absolutely delicious. We've gotten a lot of questions about how to sign up for the subscription. Again, the $50 off that's in the chat. Thank you guys for asking about that. It's unbelievable. I mean, it really is like when you think about Fulton Fish Market and why they've existed in the very beginning, 
It was literally because chefs needed the best seafood and they were the only ones getting the best seafood, but now we all get to benefit from it, which is so cool. All right, so I'm taking some of this fried thyme, which makes it so crispy. They're like little breadcrumbs almost right on top. How fun is this dish? It's kind of foody, but it's also at the same time really, really beautiful. This looks awesome. Give myself a little wipe here. Put your frites right next to it. I'm going to move my oil to the side. I want to make sure you guys can really see what's going on here. All right. Can you guys see this okay? Go to a top down. Oh, yeah. There we go. Gorgeous. I mean, come on. Smoky, kind of Parmesan-y, perfect little chickpea frites with this just glossy, sticky salmon. I mean, this is so special. All right. I'm digging in. Mmm. Mmm. These are just like the most addicting little snack. So good. A little oily. But then, you just look into the salmon. Hopefully you guys can see this. I just want you to see the doneness of the salmon. I'm just going to cut into one. Blushing pink. Perfectly cooked. Not dry. You can just, you don't even have to tear it. It just kind of breaks. That is how I want my salmon every time. Oh my gosh. That fried thyme. But just the quality. You know, we live in Salmon Central in Seattle. Yet we work with Fulton Fish Market who sends our salmon for this class 3,000 miles away. And the quality feels like, tastes like, it's local, like it just came out. I mean, it is so clean. It's like the bat. It just disintegrates on your tongue. I could eat that every day. It's so delicious. Guys, chickpea frites, pomegranate molasses, Moroccan salmon. The best of the best. You cannot get here without quality. You guys know this. I preach this all the time. You can't have a great dish with just okay ingredients. So if you want the best fish out there, if you want someone picking your fish for you, showing up to your door at the top, top level of quality, check out the link, Fulton Fish Market. Again, 200 years. You're not in business for 200 years unless you're kicking ass. Let's just be real. And they do every single time. $50 off if you subscribe to any one of their seafoods. You can see how to do that. Again, I am a big subscriber on the black cod. I love it. Uh, your choice. Kat, any last questions, thoughts from you guys? Had a great question about a possible dipping side Ooh. for the fries. Yes, what? would what? be a great, like, dipping sauce? Mm. I was thinking, like, a hummus thing. A hummus would be great. I think kind of like a yogurt-based sauce with honey or walnuts would be really good, like a tzatziki. You could do that with mint and cucumber if you wanted. Uh, muhumara, which is a red pepper sauce. It's kind of like, a, almost like a, a rum, romesco sauce, like really smoky, kind of pulverized, really good. Um, I'm thinking maybe like a whipped tahini would be really good too. I love tahini, sesame seed puree, so good. Good questions, guys. Well, I think this is a showstopper. Again, that salmon, I mean, if you really think about it, probably about five minutes worth of actual me doing stuff time, and the rest, it takes about like less than 20 minutes. So the salmon itself, so easy. Chickpea frites, a little more effort, but all worth it together. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. This one is going down to me as this really nice turning point between summer which is light and bright, and you know fall, which I just want all those like woodsy herbs and the smoky flavors and maybe something a little bit more on the bone. I love it. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. Again, check out Fulton Fish Market. We love them. We love you guys. Coming up tomorrow, uh, I am doing a classic chicken mole, but I'm doing it with coffee. So a coffee mole. 
unbelievable. Unbelievable. If you've never made mole before and you think it takes hours and hours and hours, it doesn't have to. So you're going to love this recipe. And then on Thursday, Jenny, if you've never worked with Jenny, she's amazing. She's going to do spiced Dutch babies with pumpkin butter. Let me repeat that real quick. Spiced Dutch babies with pumpkin butter. Like there is no better brunch, uh, lunch, dessert on earth. Like so good, light and fluffy, almost like a souffle. You'll love that. So that's Thursday. Wednesday, again, mole with me. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you to Fulton Fish Market, and we will see you guys soon in the kitchen. Take care, everybody.